Welcome to our first feature game review. Today's target is the ever lovable Days Gone. You'll be hearing from myself and Wilcox and their experiences with the game and whether or not we enjoyed our time with it. And I'll be abstaining from this one because I literally cannot stand another zombie apocalypse game. That's fair. Fair? Yeah. Days Gone is a strange creature from start to finish. It has a lot of unique ideas that Ben Studio has very little idea on how to implement. Originally touted as an open world Last of Us where you had to survive by any means necessary and make every bullet count, it fails to deliver on pretty much all of those promises, but eventually becomes a pretty decent shooter. So let's see where this game excels and where it gets torn limb from limb by a horde of glitchy freakers. And don't worry, we will avoid spoilers. Also, please stay tuned until the end of the video on instructions for how to win a Wilcox approved giveaway. Running this game on my launch console PS4 Fat model, this game absolutely chugged in some of the oddest moments possible. This game's frame rate dipped more often than Trump's approval ratings after any of his random Trump moments. I don't know, pick one especially when riding the bike. And there were times in the second half of the game where the map wouldn't even load because of memory leaking issues, and I couldn't progress any further without having to go look for a fix. I'll admit, I had a slightly better time than Wilcox running on my second gen Slim, but not by much. The more I upgraded my bike to go faster, the more the frame rate decided to take a break from functioning, and don't even get me started on the random hordes that would teleport around you and insta-kill you. Gameplay was a mixed bag of fun when it comes to this title. The early guns you get are absolutely garbage, especially when you combine them with the horrific dead zones of the analog sticks. It makes for some incredibly clunky gunplay. Eventually you do unlock much better guns for purchase, because of course you can't keep the guns you find on the grounds for reasons, nor are they any good. And honestly, that does help a lot, but it takes too long to do so. I'll fully agree about the early gun sucking, so much so that I played up close and personal, dealing as much melee damage as possible. And then there was the motorcycle, or what Ben Studio thinks is a motorcycle. It handles like a one-legged elephant playing hopscotch while suffering from withdrawals of whatever drug the rippers are on. PCP! And it chugs gasoline like my drunk Uncle Boomhauer. I don't have an Uncle Boomhauer, but you get one more now and the piece of being max to see you know, blah, blah. Graphically speaking, the game is pretty spot on with the normal trend. It's nothing special like Horizon Zero Dawn or Red Dead Redemption 2, but it gets the job done. My biggest problem is the world itself. It feels too cluttered. It makes driving that angry baboon of a bike much more difficult than it needed to be. It did get better with the latter half of the game through area unlocks, regions, and upgrades, but at the cost of way too many hours. The game looks alright, but on a plus side it has some pretty amazing attention to details, like the oil filter suppressors not having any holes until you actually shoot a bullet through them. The roads were a slight distraction because they literally all had the same crack pattern. I haven't seen anything this repetitive since Fallout 3 and those silly Nokia phones buried in the cement. Said it was anarchists. Each of them had the symbol painted on their face. Jesus, where? Where does she see the camera? Oh my god, write a book on why Deacon St. John is an awful character. I don't hate him, but I definitely don't like him. Why? It's because he's an asshole. Now, it could be said that it's because of the apocalypse that made him this way, but we learn through many terrible cutscenes that he was always this way. As a main character, he shows absolutely no growth, or even why he's any better than the marauders or rippers he just so happily kills. The other NPCs just kind of exist for whatever plot device is required of them that time. No real care or attachment to be found. Not so much the voice actor's fault as it is just incredibly lazy writing. This is where we disagree. Is he an asshole? Yes. But by those regards, so is Rick Grimes, so is Frank Castle. But in a post-apocalyptic world, you kind of need to be. I mean, sure he was a sarcastic prick before the end times, but it feeds into his loss and hopelessness in this new world. 
He's not killing most people for the love of it. Ish. He's killing people who rape and murder innocents, who are just trying to start a new life, so to speak, and hunting them down for both morals and camp credits. Nathan Drake seems to sleep okay at night, and that dude's literally murdered every race on the planet. But he's charming, so we like him. A lot of supporting characters are pretty pointless, but others like Ricky and Boozer help Deacon stay afloat while keeping that spark alive for what he cares for the most. Let's be honest, this is not an original concept by any stretch of the words. The trials and tribulations they are going through has been done, and for the sake of a pun, done to death. Its originality comes in the form of the bikers and the many different types of freakers, and this is where the game suffers the most, in particular the first half of the game. Once we get to Lost Lake, the game finally has a story worth telling, even if that story is unoriginal. I just wish they would have committed to telling us Deacon and Boozer's past instead of making it up on the go to suit the story. Carlos, I'm looking at your bald ass. Though it may suffer from unoriginal storytelling for this genre, I got more into the development of the main story halfway through the game. My biggest gripe comes from the constant filler side missions they force you to play in order to unlock more main story missions. They had originally stated that the core game would take about 30 hours to complete, however they easily doubled this with all the padded out side missions you may or may not want to play at your own pace. Days Gone is very much a game about making choices and the consequences that come with them. It's just such a shame that the game is afraid to let you make those choices and just puts you on everyone's shit list instead. I truly hope they get to make a sequel because the secret ending sets up such a cool premise, but some major changes need to be made in order for said sequel to succeed. There was so much potential for this to be a great game. One of those PlayStation legacy games that when you say the PS4, the very title sits on the tip of your tongue. As it stands without some free DLC down the road, this is just going to be another corpse rotting in the backlog of the average gamer's collection. This will probably remain on my backlog of games, mostly because I love my steelbooks, but I also still own The Order 1866. Nerd! That being said, for all the negatives in this game, it still had a lot of really cool concepts. If they had delivered them properly, this would be a very different conversation. Alas, they dropped the ball. Hopefully this game falls into the same category as Killzone and wows us with a sequel that beats every expectation, but that's a ways down the road, Easy Rider. Thank you so much for watching our first feature review. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe so we can actually afford to get you more free stuff. I know you guys like free stuff. You guys want more free stuff. I know you want more free stuff. Just subscribe. Why don't you love us? Buddy, you okay? Yeah. You gonna stop threatening the audience? Yeah. Do you want to give away a free hat? Yeah. Okay. I am sorry about that, guys. But to make it up to you, I'm going to offer you your first and only chance to win a Deacon's an ass hat. What? Because it's an ass. All you need to do to win is like, share, subscribe, and comment down below what game you'd like us to review next, as well as what fast food restaurant makes you the illest. And Taco Bell does not count. Remember people, Carpal Tunnel is real. It, it, yeah, it's real. So don't forget to do your stretches. <clears throat> and always, always practice safe gaming. Well, that was uncomfortable. Chuggles gasoline like Chuggles. Oh. Chuggles. <laughs> That's natural to me, I guess. <laughs> yeah, let's just merge those two words. Go for it. Chuggles. He's like, Chugs, guzzles, whatever comes naturally. Chuggles, it is! Oh.